Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! It is the first Wednesday of the month. Time for a new archival GMing video. Last month, I did a video on political games. Unfortunately, I feel that I did not do the topic justice, and I felt it was a bit more of a rambly and disorganized video. So, I'm going to do something I would not normally do, and I'm going to revisit the same topic, but this time try to present it a bit more organized. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk political games again. So, I'm going to be using the first of the Winter Court games I had run as the core example for how to handle a political game. And the first step you have to do in running a political game is determine what the main overarching conflicts are. Because while the players are going to do their own stuff, you pretty much have to have some sort of main conflicts going on. For this first Winter Court game, there were three main conflicts. The first conflict is a Ronin had shown up. This Ronin had found the teaching scrolls of the Haichibushi school, which had been extinct as a school for about a century at this point. This game was set about a generation after the Destroyer War. At this time, when I started this, they hadn't filled out all those details, and so I was using this as a new open area to explore and play in. But, as I said, this, this Ronin had these scrolls, he had a couple students, and he was petitioning the Empress to be recognized as a school and to be assigned and given to one of the great clans. Well, the Empress made the decision that as the heir to the school, he was the heir to the the Haichi family, the Boar clan's tax debt. And so, she made the decree that whatever clan could cover the debt of the Boar clan, or make arrangements to cover the debt of the Boar clan by the end of Winter Court, that clan would be the one that would be given the Haichibushi school. If no clan did by the end of Winter Court, then the Ronin and his handful of students would be required to commit seppuku. And the scrolls burned. So, that was our first conflict. The second conflict was a petition had reached the Empress from the Mantis and some of the other clans operating in the colonies that because of the threats that they were running into they would like permission for gaijin pepper weapons to be used in the colonies and in the areas between the colonies and the main portion of Rokugan. And this was a simple petition. But this would have 
much in the way of repercussions and implications on a large scale. Then the third conflict was kind of a minor thing that turned into one of the major defining conflicts of the entire Winter Court. This conflict was the Crane decided to push the envelope and bring colonial fashions into the main empire. Now, the colonies are a much warmer area than the empire, though this was being held in Cuden Hida, which was on the southern end of the empire, of the main empire, so it could actually support the these fashions. But you're basically dealing with Southeast Asian and Indian fashion being brought into an area that is culturally Japan and Korea. So this was considered scandalous. But this is being done by the Crane, who are the height of Rokugani culture. So, it was the reactions to this. the How the different clans reacted and responded to this. That was the conflict. And the one Otomo who really disapproved. But this is how you set up the conflicts. You look at things that can be going on. You look at the culture and you put things in that work within it. Note that two of these re two of these had longer re reaching impacts that I'll talk about later. But after you set up the conflicts, what do you do? You set up the power blocks. Now, each of the aforementioned issues, there were power blocks supporting or opposing them. We'll take a look at each of them in turn. This will give you an idea of how you figure out the power blocks. The first issue, the Haichibushi School. Now, you have to look at what was going on at this time. The crab were supporting the scorpion. The scorpion had a second festering pit, a place where Oni were spawning into the world in the middle of their lands. This had a wall built around it, and the crab were in the process of teaching the scorpion how to fight, how to defend against these. And the scorpion didn't really have a bushy school that was set up for fighting stand-up fights. So they wanted the Haishibushi school. Just because it would be something that they're able to work with. The crab could see the benefits, so they were also wanting it. And the dragon... The dragon were inscrutable as always, but... They did not want to see the the knowledge, the 
the school itself vanish. So these were the three main groups that supported it. The lion were actively against it. Mostly because it was a school that would trump their own combat abilities if it fell into the hands of a great clan. And the mantis accidentally insulted the insulted the Ronin, and so he outright refused to work with them. And most of the other clans were indifferent. But you had the Lion Clan outright opposing it. But of course, eventually what ended up happening was the dragon and the scorpion managed to work out a agreement between the two of them to fund to fund the school's taxes. And so it was given to both clans. But any clan could send Bushi to it. Except the lion and the mantis. Right? The second conflict, the gunpowder issue. Oh boy. So, the clans that oppose this. The lion because it meant an Ashigaru could potentially best a lion samurai. The crane, because there was no art to Gaijin Pepper weapons. And the phoenix, because they didn't want people taking too good a look at the process of making Gaijin Pepper and realizing how close it was to making their fireworks because then it would kind of be oh hey wait a minute the crane also had another slightly less well known reason and that was they had had a large number of crane end up having to commit seppuku or be outright killed as a result of the Daidaji Harrier School which was willing to use Gaijin Pepper to do its job. And it had been doing this within the Empire with as a traitorous act for generations and when it got found out about the crane had to deal with it decisively and discreetly in the form of it never happened discreetly so there you have those against the edict those for the edict, you had the crab against Shadowlands creatures. Firearms ignore the reduction, ignore the carapace rating. So, this was a good thing for the crab that they could get permission to use these. The unicorn, just because. It's different. And the Mantis were the main ones for, for this. Most of the other clans were falling in the direction of, 
where do their alliances lie between these two groups? And it was eventually the Scorpion managed to reach an agreement with the Crane for a compromise that would basically be the Crane would make the guns, the Phoenix would make the gunpowder, and it would be sent via the Mantis over the sea. But the the fact that one of the Scorpion actually found out through investigation that the Phoenix Hanabi was made using gunpowder. A Rokugani version of gunpowder, but still Gaijin pepper. That caused a bit of a panic and a bunch of deaths and caused the Winter Court to end early. But the big issue that had by far the farthest reaching implications was the Crane's importing of colonial fashion. Honestly, most of the clans for this power block were neutral. It was the Crane. The Crane were the epitome of fashion. Most would go, I wouldn't wear that, but the crane, fine. While many were also trying to secure the examples of this fashion for the court. But you had an Otomo who was really displeased with it. And he was constantly berating, belittling, and insulting the fashion itself. And he was stirring the pot, the whole court. While the scorpion were subtly helping the crane fight him. And it ended with a duel. The Dragon Courtier manipulated the Atomo with the help of the Scorpion and an NPC Crane into challenging him to a duel. The The uh, Otomo had a Sepun Guardsman, a greatly skilled duelist, at least among the Sepun, as his champion. And you see, the Otomo was expecting the Yojimbo of this courtier to be his champion. Well, the Scorpion had gotten a favor owed to him by a Kenshinzen. And not just any Kenshinzen. An old lady sensei among the Kenshinzen. And so he pulled that favor to get this master duelist, one of the greatest duelists in the empire, in fact, to step up and act as the champion for the dragon. And 
And yes, at this point, it was very much a, the Atomo lost. And then he left. He had people he had hired to attack the the dragon in the hallways of the court. And man, th things just devolved from there. There ended up being a brawl in the hallways. Someone tried to kill the dragon because he'd figured out things that he shouldn't have known because it was covering up for one of the other families, one of the other player-run families, and then let, let's just say it was a, a duel to first blood that resulted in four deaths and the end of the winter court. One of those Deaths was was one of the other PCs trying to off the PCs who'd figured out things that they shouldn't have, using that as a cover. And then one of those was a PC committing seppuku so he would not have to give testimony as to what was actually going on. And that is a political game. You have all these things going on. And this isn't counting what all the agendas and such the different PCs were doing. As they were talking with each other, plotting with each other, etc., etc. Forming their own alliances. And that, by the way, was... The thing that came out of the fashion debacle. The scorpion and the crane ended up forming a extremely solid alliance. This alliance, over the course of the next two winter courts, kept getting stronger and stronger to the point where the Scorpion and the Crane were actually a power block in and of themselves. But, as I said, this is a better understanding, a more organized treatment of political games. I hope you enjoyed this. Next month, I'm going to start a series of archival GMing videos on world building. Until then, and until my regularly scheduled videos, I'd just like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming!